Today I've got a nice functional equation type question from a Kyrgyzstan math Olympiad. So this comes from the year 2009. And so we're given a function f and we don't know much about it, but we know it satisfies this crazy functional equation. So it takes x squared plus x plus 3 plus 2 f evaluated at x squared minus 3x plus 5. And it gives us x squared or 6x squared minus 10x plus 17. And then our goal is to find f evaluated at 2009. So that's the year of this exam. Okay, so maybe what would be our first step here? Well, we've got three polynomials built into this problem. We've got the polynomial inside of f in this first case, the polynomial inside of f in the second case, and finally this 6x squared minus 10x plus 17. And I think maybe a kind of logical place to start would be to try to write this 6x squared minus 10x plus 17 as a linear combination of these two polynomials. And you'll see that we can't quite do it, but we can get pretty close. So let's notice this. If we take twice this polynomial and four times this polynomial, we'll end up with 2x squared plus 4x squared, which gives us 6x squared, and we've at least built this leading coefficient. Okay, so let's do that. We'll take 2 times x squared plus x plus 3, and we'll add that to 4 times x squared minus 3x plus 5. Like I said, that's going to give us 6x squared for our leading term, and then we'll have 2x minus 12x, so that will be minus 10x for our constant or our linear term, and then 6 plus 20, so 26 for our constant term. Okay, now let's compare that to what we have over here, and we'll notice that it's almost the same. We're only off by the constant term. So maybe in order to highlight that, we'll write this as 6x squared minus 10x plus 17, and then plus another 9 like that. And that really motivates us to maybe split this 9 into two parts and maybe collect them both over here. So let's maybe notice that 9 is obviously the same thing as 6 plus 3. Maybe we can take the 3 and bring it over here, and then the 6 and bring it in with this one. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We have 2 times x squared plus x plus 3 minus 3, and then plus 2 times the quantity, 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 3 equals our polynomial, which is x squared minus 10x plus 17. So I did a little work in that step. Notice I factored a 2 out of this to make it 2 times 2 is the same thing as 4. I did that so it would look very similar to what we have right here. So let's notice this is 2 evaluated at a polynomial minus 3. And then inside of these big parentheses is 2 evaluated at the other polynomial minus 3. So that makes each of these terms look pretty similar. Okay, so now let's give some names for these polynomials. So I'll set maybe p of x equal to x squared plus x plus 3, and then q of x equal to x squared minus 3x plus 5. Great. And then notice our equation up here is of the form, let's see if we can write this down. This will be 2 times p of x minus 3 plus 2 times 2 times q of x minus 3 equals 6x squared minus 10x plus 17. So we have something like that. But looking at this equation, that gives us a motivated way to rewrite this functional equation so that it looks a little bit simpler. So I'll write that down. So this is going to be f evaluated at p of x. And then from that, we will subtract 2 times p of x minus 3. And then we'll have plus 2 times f evaluated at q of x. And then from that, we'll subtract 2 times q of x evaluated at 3. And then when all is said and done, we get 0 out of this.
And that's because this f of p of x plus 2 times f of q of x gives us this polynomial right here, the 6x squared minus 10x plus 17. But then this 2p of x minus 3, and then that 2q of x minus 3 times 2 gives us the same polynomial. So when we do all of that combination, we get 0. But let's notice that this guy right here bears a lot of similarities to this guy right here. And that motivates us to define a new function, and that function I'll call g. So we've got g of x is equal to f of x minus 2x minus 3. And that 2x minus 3 is in parentheses. Okay. But now we can take this whole bit right here, and this is exactly g evaluated at our polynomial p of x, and then this bit right here, which is 2 times g evaluated at our polynomial q of x, and we see we get 0. And notice if we can find g evaluated at 2009, then we can also find f evaluated at 2009 given this like quick change of variables for our function. Okay, so anyway, let's maybe bring some of this information to the top and we'll keep going. So we did a bunch of simplification on the last board. We set g of x equal to f of x minus 2x minus 3, that should be. And then we define these two polynomials, p of x and q of x, and realized that our functional equation, which was kind of complicatedly written over here, could be simplified as g evaluated at p of x plus 2 times g evaluated at q of x equals 0. Great. And now we also notice that if we could find g evaluated at 2009, then we could also find f evaluated at 2009. But in order to get 2009 inside of g, we'd probably like to find out when p of x and or q of x is equal to 2009. So let's solve, maybe I'll say g of x equal to 2009 first. But notice that's just going to be a quadratic equation. We have x squared plus x plus 3 equals 2009. I'll let you guys solve that on your own using the quadratic formula if you need to, but I'll tell you what one of the solutions is. So one of the solutions, which I'll call x naught, is minus 1 minus 5 times the square root of 312 over 2, like that. And then let's also solve, oh sorry, this shouldn't be g of x, this should be p of x. Let's also solve q of x equals 2009, which is also fairly reasonable. It's just another quadratic equation which can be solved with the quadratic formula. So that gives us a solution x1, I'll call it, which is equal to 3 plus 5 times the square root of 312 over 2. Okay, so I think that's pretty interesting to see here. Another thing we can see is that if we take p evaluated at x1, that's going to be equal to the following expansion. So it'll be x1 squared minus 3x1 plus 5, but that's q, so we need to look at the difference between p and q. That'll be plus 4x1 and then minus 2, so something like that. So if you were to combine like terms here, you would get p. But because of how we define x1 as this solution, we know this guy right here is just 2009. So this simplifies to 4 times x1 plus 2007. So like that. Okay, so now let's do the same thing, but like for q. So we've got q evaluated at x0. So we can write that as x0 squared plus x0 plus 3. So that's our polynomial p. So to turn that into our polynomial q, we will subtract 4 times x0 and then add 5. But just as this thing right above it, this guy right here is also 2009. So that means that this is minus 4x0 plus 2014. Okay, so that's looking good.
But since X0 and X1 have these pretty similar structures, notice they both include the square root of 312, we can easily compare these two numbers. And I'll let you guys maybe check it, but what you get is that these are the same. So we have these two numbers right here are equal. So in other words, P evaluated at X1 is the same thing as Q evaluated at X0. So I'll set those equal to a new number, which I will call Y. Okay, good. And now we can look at two versions of this equation. One evaluated at X0 and one evaluated at X1. Okay, so let's look at the one evaluated at X0. That'll give us G evaluated at P evaluated at X0, but P evaluated at X0 is 2009. And then plus two times G evaluated at Q evaluated at X0, but Q evaluated at X0 was Y equals zero. Now, likewise, we can evaluate this at X1. So we'll have G evaluated at X1 but G evaluated at P of X1 is G evaluated at Y for the same reason. And then similarly, this is two times G evaluated at 2009. And we get that this is equal to zero. But now we can view this as a system of two equations and two unknowns to solve for G evaluated at 2009. And what we'll see is G evaluated at 2009 is equal to zero. So maybe we could see that very quickly by taking twice this equation and then subtracting them, and that'll immediately give us G evaluated at 2009 is equal to zero. But let's recall that G was equal to F minus 2X minus three. So that means that F evaluated at 2009 will be equal to two times 2009 and then minus three. So that's in fact the number 4,014. So that's our final answer, and that's a good place to stop.